Ladies and gentlemen, good night. Welcome to the show, Question for Fotten. And thank you for watching EPL TVI. First of all, let's begin to uh, introduce the several contestants of tonight. At the first place, Mr. Friedman, specialized in quantum physics. At the second and the third place, the two chemists specialized in chemical process, Mr. Atkins and Mr. Jones. At the fourth place, last but not least, the very specialized mm, special Ben. The theme of tonight will be the photovoltaic effect. Without losing a second, let's begin the first round. Just a reminder, gentlemen, when you think you have the correct answer to the question, just buzz. Oh, Ben took his own buzz. <laughs> Great. Anyway. Let's begin with the first question. Be ready, gentlemen. What is the ideal material for the conception of a photovoltaic cell? <coughs> the silicium. It's a semiconductor and it has a perfect band gap energy. And that's correct. <laughs> Let's have a little more explanation about the subject. As you said, silicon is a semiconductor, but what is a semiconductor? In a particular material, electrons can only have different well-defined energy levels. These values create some authorized energy bands. The highest field energy band is called the valence band, and the next band is called conduction band. These two bands can be separated by a band gap, a set of values that an electron can take. For a semiconductor, a band gap exists, but this energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band must be lower than for electron volt. Then, photons can give their energy to electrons so that they can jump the gap and produce an electron hole pair. This electron hole pair can be used to generate current by applying a voltage on it. If the energy of the photon was too low to create an electron hole pair, it will go through the material. That's why some materials are transparent. Silicon has a band gap energy of 1.14 electron volt, which actually maximizes the production of electrical energy, as you can see in this graphic. And now the second question. In an electric circuit, by what electronical component can a solar cell be represented and when it's illuminated? <laughs> a lamp! Mm, unfortunately, not quite, Ben. By its p-n junction, a solar cell can be represented by a diode, and this diode switches into a current generator when the cell receives photons. And that's the right answer. I propose some enlightenment about this port. Hi, I'm the lab guy. Actually, here is a schematic circuit of a photovoltaic cell. This model includes a current source. The photocurrent generated is generated by photons that create a pair of electron hole. This uh, source is uh, connected in parallel with the diode. It's actually a p-n junction, but it can be represented uh, like a diode. Those two components are connected in parallel with other resistances. The first one is the internal resistance and the other one is the resistance of the devices to be powered. Now, to understand the p-n junction, let me introduce the doping concept. To do this, let's examine the small drawings on the blackboard. A positively doped semiconductor is obtained by adding some impurities, boron for example, to create a deficiency of electron in the material. Inversely, the negative doping is obtained by adding some other impurities, like phosphorus, to create an excess of electron. The p-n junction consists in putting side by side two semiconductors, one positively doped and another negatively doped. If the diode is in the reverse direction, current doesn't flow because charges accumulate to the extremities. In opposite, if uh, the diode is in the forward direction, the current cross because the charges are allowed to flow through the diode. Now let's continue with the third question. What is the theoretical efficiency of a classic solar panel and the difference with the reality. The theoretical efficiency is around 40%, but in reality, we've never reached more than 19%. 
And that's a correct answer for Mr. Atkins. But from where comes this huge difference? Let's have a little more explanation. There are several factors that appear in reality which are not considered in the theoretical efficiency. First of all, the parasites' resistance are neglected. Also, the effect of the temperature on the voltage is taken as minimal, which means that the power observed in practical will be applied lowered. And finally, the theoretical efficiency is calculated with the hypothesis that each electron all pair creates current, but it's not true, because there isn't enough electrode. We can't cover all the surface of a solar panel with electrodes since they reflect light. And now, the final question of the round. Be concentrated, gentlemen. Name one present of future innovation for the solar panels and their applications. Transparent photovoltaic panels used as windows. Multi-junction panels. Solar panels who move with the sun. Solar underwear. <laughs> oh, almost all of you give a correct answer to the question. Accepted, Ben. Ben, excuse me, you're wrong again. Number four. Now let's listen to the point of view of the specialist. No, you hang your pants. No, you hang. Oh, sorry. Well, well done, guys. But you could have also mentioned the CDTE cells are the way better for the environment, the organic cells. Well, see you next time. All right, gentlemen, I hope you're not ready for the next round. Oh, I guess it's now finished for today. The game is finished for tonight. We meet next week for a new episode of Questions for a Photon. Three remaining contestants will try to win a wonderful trip to Louvain and Earth. Do not miss it. See you next time. <laughs>